got to get ready for the show. Oh, geez. And he talks about me being late. Oh. Thank you for joining us. On oh, Talk. we're on. We're on. Oh, now. dude. <laughs> you want to know I had to comb my hair before the show. Please Welcome stay. to Poise on Facebook. Jerry's running late, as always. Um, today's show is going to be the do's and don'ts of respiratory. Um, so we'll be talking about a lot of products. If you have any questions, please post them and we will get to, we'll try to get to all of them. Usually we do. Um, if somebody's not so long-winded, I um, you know how that goes. Um, so first, though, we're going to talk about the molt. Um, Jerry noticed some of his birds started molting. So I thought so, we'd show somebody or people what it looks like. Didn't want to be caught. Uh, the molt appears different times in different places based on the weather, but mm -hmm. it's right around the corner for everybody. And I thought I'd show this bird, and that's what brought it to mind. I don't know. I don't. Can they see that? Uh, okay. You'll notice the molt usually starts at the head. And you can see those ruffled feathers and probably can't see it, but there's some bare spots. So uh, if your birds start to lose the feathers, don't get excited. It's molting season. But uh, if you haven't, birds haven't started to molt, you may want to give some consideration to one of the molt products that we have. Uh, Aviomed makes a great one, but there are others because now is when they're going to be losing feathers and now is when they're going to be growing feathers. So the molt products that are available, this is the time to use them. Um, so if you don't have them and the molt just barely started or hasn't started, you may want to uh, get one of the molt products. Um, I wanted to show you, you would ask me a question. You had a picture. We'll go, oh, we're going to talk about that, the, the lice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we'll talk about that later. Can I give you that picture? Don't have it? Okay. I forgot to send it to Vodka. Well, at least you admitted it rather than blame it on me. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to have, a, I think, a, a really interesting show. Um, and we want to talk a little bit about the molt, which we did. Mm -hmm. So, what's, did you say hello and all that kind of stuff? I did. Okay. Um, if, if you don't know, this is Jerry, and I'm Gina. I think they know by now. I mean, there's a lot of new new people right now in the pigeons. I think we're going into, I was asking Veronica, I think we're going into our fourth year, right around the corner. It's hard to believe we've been doing it that long. I never imagined in doing this kind of a thing that we would have the response that we do. Mm -hmm. And uh, it would last this long, because how many programs can you do about pigeons? But, we somehow find a way. And one of the ways we've, we've found is asking you. Um, if you have a, a question, and a lot of these shows are based on your questions, send a, a message in to us uh, via Facebook or and YouTube. YouTube. So we're always looking for uh, uh, new things to talk about, and, and we talk about all the time. We have all of these products to talk about. I think it would be great if we didn't talk about any of them uh, because the information is in the catalog. Uh, but uh, I say great because that means we're getting a lot of questions. And as of the moment, we haven't got a question at all. What are we going to do? So before we start, start talking about respiratory, I want to talk about a few other things first. Um, we are working on our new catalog. It's coming along really good, and we should have it by the Louisville show. No, we will have it by the Louisville show. Yep. We will have the new catalog. This is the first or second version of it. We second. just... Second? Uh huh? First Sec or second for you. Maybe third or fourth <laughs> or fifth. Um, yeah. And one of my jobs, and it was a long time consuming chore, not just for the ladies, but for me, um, my job first time was to go through it page by page, read every sentence, look at every picture, check every number, uh, and then I would mark it with a yellow highlighter and 
centered on to Veronica and Gina and Kim, um, the, they would make the correction. But I know for a fact uh, that no matter what we do, we said it before, there'll be mistakes and some of them we put in there intentionally just so that you can say, hey, I found a mistake. Um, what else? Oh, so some of you don't know, we are on Facebook and YouTube. So make sure you go follow us and like on Facebook and YouTube. Um, if you set your notifications up, you will get a reminder when the show is about to start, just so you don't forget. Um, what else? Respiratory. Oh, well, we've... You want to talk about it now? Or there's something else we want to get over? Yeah. Oh, we should we mention that the auctions that we had mm, uh, will be starting again over the next couple of shows, uh, raising money for pigeon charity, so that's going to be right around the corner. Did you know that, Veronica? Oh, yeah. Well, we kept it from her. We wanted to keep it because she, she really enjoys doing those she auctions. She does. So the auctions will be starting back up soon. Yeah, if not the next show, the one after that. Yes. Okay. Um, so talking about respiratory, respiratory is um, a big problem this time of year. We've been getting lots and lots of calls about respiratory mm -hmm. issues. And so that's why we decided to do a show on respiratory. And the reason we're getting so many calls, of course, is the, the crazy weather we're having, going from um, a very dry day to a week of rain. And so rain creates respiratory issues, mm -hmm. and weather has a lot to do with it. Um, and if you learn anything from the show, and I hope you learn more than just one thing, is be prepared. Um, it wouldn't hurt for you to go through our catalog and, and uh, consider stocking or ordering now. And we usually don't talk about buying our products, but now mm -hmm. is the time to do it um, and have it on hand. So look through the catalog and uh, find some products, whether in pill form, or powder form, or liquid form, uh, and you'll be ready if you have uh, a respiratory issue. And, um, if I were going to mention anything, what would you mention first that has in stock for respiratory? Uh, Thailand. Yeah. Thailand is. For Hexine. Yep. And uh, uh, spec, spectomycin. What is your one? Spiridox. Spiridox, yeah. That's another one. Spiridox comes in two forms, and that's, mm -hmm. a, that's a good one to have. In, uh, what happened? We were all jazzed up, ready to go, and now it just seems we've gone flat. Have we? No. No, okay. I'm just... waiting to talk, just waiting on you. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Always my fault. <laughs> Not your fault. So, respiratory is um, a family of diseases. So, that's why there's so many different products. And if you notice that you're having a respiratory problem, once it starts, you don't want to wait and wait and wait to treat. Um, it could eventually kill your birds, depending on what type of respiratory problem you have. Did you have an example of that with a customer? I don't have to name names. I did. You know? um, he lost some pigeons and, yep. You sent in a picture. You threw me off track. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. sent a picture. Um, and if some of you, I don't, some people may have not ever went through the whole catalog, but in the very back of the catalog is some pictures and some explanations of different diseases. So it might be wise to um, look at those in the back of the catalog. And the new catalog, we're expanding that. Yes, um, we are. We're going to have more pictures so mm -hmm. that people are able, more able to identify what the problems they have. All right. Also something in the catalog that a lot of people don't know is we have an index. So if you're looking for a particular product, um, look in the index, it'll tell you exactly what page it's on. I have a lot of people call and say, I can't find this in the catalog, but there's an index. It's it'll help you. Simple little things like that. And yeah. Makes you shake your head. Yeah. Because there's a complete index and, right. and people uh, don't use it. Yeah. So it's in there. And um, Dan Kevin Rowe, in case he watches this uh, on, uh, on our site in a little bit of time, Kevin couldn't be with us. So... We have one less watching us, and Kevin was a <laughs> was a big, big contributor to the show. So, um, if you have a question, we'll, we'll keep repeating it. But 
you're what makes the show, so we need uh, your input. Before we talk about uh, more about respiratory, mm -hmm. I want to mention something because it happened today. Um, I have my pigeons in eight bird uh, cages or eight cage units, four levels. Mm -hmm. okay. So I'm always looking at them and I noticed the bird today didn't look bad, but after all of these years, I said, something doesn't add up with that pigeon. So I got it and I'm going to show it to you. But the point I'm trying to make is you may not have the experience that I do, but it makes sense for you to handle your birds as often as you can. By doing them, by handling them, you're going to find out um, just from experience what's right and what's a little off, something's wrong, you know. I'll show you this bird. And this came about because I was handling my birds. This is a bird that I was picked up this morning uh, and was handling it. And Gina, you tell me, you know what, did I already show you this bird? No, okay. you told me about it. I can see it. Okay. You can, I think on camera, you can see how uh, sharp his breastbone is. It doesn't have the proper coverage. I picked it up and knew immediately something was wrong. Now you pick up this bird um, uh, you, you look at him and he looks normal, mm -hmm. uh, but there's two things that I noticed. His tail, see the yellowish color? That means that it's probably from himself as he, you, know, you have a hard time with that, huh? breathing. Uh, it probably means he's not feeling well and his tail is dropped more than it should. And it's in the droppings themselves. The other thing when you're talking about pigeons is as you handle them, you will know right away you got a, a problem with a bird. He's so darn skinny. And this is an example of what we call going light. So if you have a bird that's going light, um, it makes sense to get right on it. And what you would want is a broad spectrum antibiotic because just this doesn't tell me what's wrong. It's just a symptom that something is definitely wrong. So what I did was, I, I'm not going to talk about this, we might as well do it now. I get started giving it a pill. First thing I did is I have some, an empty hole. I put the bird in there. I want to segregate them from the rest. And then what I wanted to show is, you can also, because it's so misleading, see the white nostril? That's what it's supposed to be. On a perfectly healthy bird, you're going to have white nostrils. Well, in this particular case, the nostrils are white. Well, so that wasn't the symptom. What I knew was the fact that it was going light. And see, this one isn't doing it. But when I noticed it, it was gaping. Or the, the mouth was opening. It was breathing through an open mouth. So I thought I'd mention this. This is going light. And that the important point is handle your birds individually as often as you can. This will also help tame them down and they'll be very, very easy to handle. So how do you give a pill? It's, it's really simple. And I say it's simple because I've done it so often. So here's a tablet that I held back because I wanted to give this bird a pill and show you how it's done. So what I do, I'm going to scan. Can they see this? Okay. So what I do is, first of all, I open the beak. So now the beak is open and I hold my two fingers so that the beak is still open. And all I do is drop it down. Now, that isn't all you have to do. I could see the bird already swallow it, but I gently stroke the throat to make it swallow. The bird has already swallowed it. Pill is gone, should be, yep, it is. So if you ever had any questions about how giving pill. I can do it myself, but there's a lot of people that don't have the experience that I do. So it doesn't mean that you can't have somebody else hold it while you give the pill. All right.
hope this bird makes it. And I think it will because I, I caught it early. Okay, that's that. So you can't always look at a bird and tell that something wrong. You actually have to touch excellent, it. Yep, excellent point. Yep. And to see if something's wrong. Okay. Okay. Send your questions in, guys, whether it's about respiratory or any other problems that you're having. Okay, so I think we should talk about the Thailand injectable first. Okay. When people um, ask me about respiratory issues, um, the most important, well, I shouldn't say most important, one of the questions they ask is, which is the best? And I'm always responding, well, it's hard to say because family, uh, respiratory is a family of diseases. Mm -hmm. So if I had to pick anything, um, that I know I actually have a respiratory issue of some sort, and that's heavy breathing, mucus in their nose, slimy stuff in their beak, breathing heavy. There's so many symptoms. Thailand 200 is not the least expensive way to go, um, but it is the best way to go, and I don't say that very often. Um, you look in our catalog and you'll see the directions because this is this works on pigs it works on chickens it works on horses cows anything um but it also works on pigeons so what i tell people i want to show it to you i wanted to look see this is good until 2022. it's a big bottle once you have opened it you keep it in the refrigerator it has a, a soft, uh, a, a, pardon? Stopper. Stopper, here. So you're going to stick your needle. It's an injectable. That's what I wanted to mention. You're going to stick the needle in here. And as with all um, injectables, you never stick a needle into here that has been into a bird. So you don't go stick a bird and then stick it in here. You could be transferring bacteria. So, I guess the point being this, uh, the point I wanted to make strongest is it's almost instantaneous relief. It's a great product. Thailand is, was uh, brought onto the market for respiratory issues. But what I like about it is so many of the products that we, we have and other people have are not fast acting. It might take 24 hours to get into the bloodstream and uh, by that time the bird could be dead uh, so great great product for oh, i can't remember Sheena. what is the dosage is it half a cc half a cc yeah. Yeah. half a cc and the other thing i might mm -hmm. mention it while we're talking about it if you're going to inject a bird there is a video no oh. we're going to do a Jerry's going to do a video and we're going to post it on our site on how to inject. Mm -hmm. So how do you inject? I, and I've done this before, I hold the bird between my legs. I won't do it that, uh, do it that way today. Now, where do you inject? It's a vertical. This is horizontal. This is vertical. So what you're going to do is I do it this way, like scissors, and I bend the bird's head over. And this is where I'm going. I'm coming down this way so that the needle just basically goes under the skin not real deep you're going to vaccinate that way um, for like i said you may not be able to do it but uh, maybe you've got a pigeon buddy or a spouse that's willing just to hold the bird i do it this way with my thumb i twist it over and if you want you sprinkle a little bit of water on here or with a spritzer so that the feathers become uh, uh, point where you can actually see the skin. It's hard on a bird like this, but if you peel it that way and it's wet, you'll see the skin. Anything else I should mention? Mm -mm. Okay. That's it. Oh, so that's the only um, injectable respiratory product we have. The other ones are powders that go in the water. We have tablets. We have liquid. Um, you name it. But yeah. this one 
There's no question. But if you are in a situation where you have multiple birds with respiratory or you have a very valuable bird, um, works very, very quickly. But as I said, it is expensive. All right. We're going to talk about other products, right? Do yes. You, you wanna... uh, did you want to talk about this? Yep. Um, I just, being retired, I don't, I'm not up on everything as I used to be. At least I think I used to be. <laughs> but this is a product that I have been looking for for a long time and could not buy it. Well, we, we're fortunate enough now to be able to get it. And um, the drug itself is carnidazole. And with carnidazole in tablet form, it's for canker. Um, so if you're thinking about, I'm, I'm not stumbling, but one of the things we talk about all the time is rotation of drugs because a pigeon gets uh, immune to any particular drug over a fairly short period of time. So if you have uh, canker tablets now, this is unlike any of the other ones that we have. So this is the product to have. It's in tablet form, and I think there's a hundred in here. Mm -hmm. Half a tablet for young birds and a full tablet for adult, adult birds. If you remember the old product. Ha <laughs> ha, you forgot. What was it? Spartrix. 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 That's what was in Spartrix. So if you like that, then you'll like this one. It's a fairly new product and it's not in our catalog. Is it on the website? Yes. Yeah, okay. It'll be in the new catalog. Right. Now, um, We apologize. It Not just it seems to happen. I don't know whether it's, you know, I don't know whether it's the building with the steel roofs. We're back. Okay. Sorry, guys. We, I don't know what happened, but we're back. Okay. Um, I was going to mention, I talked to a guy yesterday and uh, he was asking me, he said, I've never seen this before and I've had pigeons for years and years. One of the bird's ears, mm -hmm. ear hole, was stopped up. And he couldn't figure out what it was. And what it was, I knew instantly, it was canker. So many people think canker is a disease that you see in the throat. Well, it's not. Uh, the other thing is, um, canker is not affected by antibiotics. When I'm saying antibiotics, it was Tylen, amoxicillin. There's so many drugs, but they don't work on what we call a protozoa. Protozoa is canker, coccidiosis, and worms, and none of those are treated with antibiotics. You need a specific product, like three in one, treat those three. Um, in his particular case, I said, well, ask, uh, what color is it? He said, well, it's kind of yellowish. And he said, see if you can remove it. He did, and it was canker. So a lot of people don't realize you get canker in the ear, you can get canker in the nose, you can get canker in the rectum, you can get it in the eye, any opening, uh, and usually canker is a young bird disease. So um, that, that answered that problem. This one I had never got before, right. but was aware if you read it. Um, you mentioned this earlier, Gina, and I think it's, it's, it's a point well taken. Um, we, I'm not finding fault with you folks. But we spend a lot of time trying to make our catalog 
more than just the catalog. We're trying to make it a resource that you can go to and answer questions. Um, if you would spend a little bit of time, I don't want to. I don't want to sound negative, but that catalog has so much information. If you were to go to the correct section or anything that you think you might have, the answer is probably right there. Uh, in the next catalog, we, uh, Gina mentioned it earlier, we're going to have even more pictures of diseases, which I don't think anybody else has ever addressed in catalog form. So it's a catalog, but it is so till now. Till now. It's a catalog, but it's so, so much more. Take advantage of the catalog. And I think a lot of times, um, if you're reading, you'll find what you probably, you'll find the answer to so many health questions. So, did I chastise them? Did I give them a little, bit. A little bit. Okay. <laughs> well, it's, it's so much uh, more. You should have the catalog all the time. And before you call, you go through it, and I'll bet you you'll find, and if you do call me, you'll probably find out, go right to the same product you're looking at. All right, we want to talk about some more products. Um, another thing about the respiratory products, uh, the ones that end in cycling. Anytime you have a product that ends in cycling, you have to remove the grit mm -hmm. when you're treating them. And that's why when you're thinking you're going to use a medication, read the label and if it ends in cycling L -I -L, just l-i-n-e um it's going to tell you pull the grit um what the reason for that a lot of people perhaps don't know is it counteracts some of the medications so if you're using a medication and you don't take the grit away the medication probably won't be as strong or able to do the job it's supposed to do it's so 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 important we have tetracycline, chlorotetracycline, doxycycline, there's others. Uh, so many of the products used for pigeons uh, end in cycling, takes quite away. Another good thing to point out is if, you, if you're treating your whole flock with medication in the water and you have a bird that's very sick, you may want to use a dropper or a syringe to make sure that bird is actually getting do we the medicated water? We do. Okay. It's a little mm -hmm. dropper, like an eye dropper, um, and it's great for when you're isolating pigeons to treat them individually. But it's a good point that Gina made, but also, you uh, remember I told you at the beginning, handle your birds, look at your birds, spend some time with your birds. You want to catch the disease as quick as you possibly can, because uh, it sounds contradictory in our catalog, some of those products tell you uh, not to be used on the sick bird. So um, read the, the directions, read the catalog, and use a product that makes a lot of sense to you. Um, because, uh, oh, I, I know my point is, watching those birds every day, you will get used to the idea, and you'll know right away when a person isn't, a pigeon isn't feeling well and my mind was ahead of myself because um, I know in many cases when I look at Vicki and other people that I might not mention I can tell something's wrong and uh, if, if you will get that ability with your pigeons too if the only way to do it is to read 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 look at the catalog buy a good book and uh, you'll save a lot of um, pigeons lives by knowing in advance and the other thing is um, I've told people in the past, you should be prepared. You should have a, like a three-in-one, which treat those three protozoas we talked about. You should also have something on hand like amoxicillin, a broad spectrum. You also should have something like, um, Tony's treasure, something like that in pill form, so that if you segregate your birds, you've got something. Don't wait. Um, until you, the birds are sick, you, if you can get it on at the very day you know that something's wrong, you'll get a head start and uh, it's better to catch the disease in the early stages rather than when they're really, really sick. I mean, you know, one product I forgot to bring out was one drop one eye one time, mm -hmm. didn't I? 
Not I here. Forgot. Um, but the um, one of the things, one drop, one eye, one time is for one eye cold, right. respiratory issues. Sure, right. But if you buy those little, one of those little dropper bottles, you can probably pick them up at a drugstore, I don't know. It's a little dropper bottle. So that when you know you have a problem with one bird, you segregate it right away. And you can use the eye dropper because you also should treat your whole flock because they've been contaminated. So with an eye dropper, you put the one teaspoon or two teaspoons to a gallon as directed in a catalog, but also you fill the stopper, the uh, dropper bottle, and you can use it on a segregated bird too. Mm -hmm. Or if you don't want to use that medicated water, you can just get a tablet and use the tablet. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. So I guess the did. point being is, um, I think probably in 90% in of the uh, medicine cabinets in the United States have neosporin on them because uh, in it because neosporin treats so many abrasions and cuts and sores and things like that um, and I tell you you ought to have neosporin on your, in your medicine cabinet it's a good product but that's not why I brought it up but I brought up the idea is that you should have something like Tony's treasure or or a vivid tablet, you should have something like amoxicillin, you should have something that treats uh, respiratory issues. So don't wait. Now we do everything we can to get it out the same day, but you know, with today's mail, it's crazy. The mail is not what it used to be. I don't know. I think a lot of it is because of the virus. They can't keep enough people working. But what used to take um, two or three days to get, in some cases, it takes a week to two weeks to get. Or longer. Or longer. So if you got to, if we ask you about mailing, you may want to suggest, or they, you may want to say no, send it by UPS. Um, UPS, much much better service. And I hate For to sure. say that, but it's true. Yeah. 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 So some people don't have problems getting their mail in a timely manner, but some people it, it's taken a long time. All right, we're going to talk about some tablets that are good to have one of uh, they're all good i don't know if it's the best if i had to choose one it would be spiridox spiridox which is short for spiridoxycycline spiramycin. Take, take, huh? spiramycin and doxycycline yeah take it away take the, the grit away because it, it ends in doxy it ends in cycling you No, know what even this one doesn't tell you that oh there it is doxycycline yeah it has spiramycin and doxycycline a, a really a fairly new product on the market for the last number of years um, but very very effective on almost any type of respiratory issue good one to have then there's one it's called the magic bullet so to speak it's divot and divot the ingredients let me tell you see if they tell you um, yeah it's got the I'm reading. Doxycycline has sulf sulfoquinoxaline, mm -hmm. which ends in L-I-N-E. So once again, uh, keep it in mind, read the instructions, and if you're going to have a bird in sick bay or you're going to treat your flock of birds, um, remember, uh, take a grid away. Then there's another one. It's called Respire. Respire is short for respiro respiratory and uh, made for pigeons. Let me see if it has the cycling in it. Oh, this is the company that doesn't put mm -hmm. the ingredients on it, but um, it is a, a respiratory drug. So those are three powdered for, powder, uh, tablets. tablet form. Those are tablets. Tony's Treasure. Uh, um, I think I wanted this one out here specifically, and Gina had already got it out, is that it comes in a small bottle of 100, but it also comes in a bottle with a thousand. Now, you would never think anybody would buy a thousand pills, but they do. It's a fairly good seller. Um, and I'm trying to see uh, disposal. It doesn't list what's in it. Okay. It doesn't tell you what's in it, right? Okay. But it tells you it will not treat viral diseases, but we know. But it says it's a multi disease cure. Um, People keep it in stock 
you can buy it in a hundred, you can buy it in a thousand because it treats so many different products. All right. It treats so many different problems. Pro don't mind me. My mind is always three steps ahead of where my mouth is. Isn't that true? Yes. <laughs> All right. Yeah, other respiratory problems. And, you know, it's amazing. We haven't got a question yet. I was going to say that. 35 that. minutes in and not one question. What's going on, guys? <laughs> Are you tired like me? Maybe we Hot. maybe we answered all the questions, or I know other questions. And I know there's questions out there. I know <laughs> it. All right. We're going to talk about some more respiratory. This um, we have in stock only because people have a, have a hard time finding it. It's specifically a human product, elderberry juice. Elderberry juice is famous for what it appears to do in helping with the adenovirus. So it doesn't cure it, but it gets them through it. But it's also a product that clears the, the mucus from their mouth. It's a good um, respiratory product, goes into drinking water. One of the few that we tell you, once you open it, be sure to put it in a refrigerator for long-term use. So I was gonna see, uh, made in the United States, mm -hmm. isn't that great? <laughs> and it's organic. But the main thing is adenovirus and respiratory issues. It's become a good seller. Um, and I think it's one of the few that actually is in a glass bottle. Mm -hmm. Almost everything out is, uh, uh, is plastic. But I think part of that is it's so strong it would eat away at the plastic. Hello, granddaughter. So that would be an all-natural product for respiratory, in which we have a couple other all-natural products. Um, we have some uh, Hilton Herb brand products. Those are all-natural and Pigeon Vitality products, and we have a, a big line of those. Now, I think the day is coming, actually, it's probably already here, where you can't use, you can't buy antibiotics without a prescription. That's coming. Uh, and I think uh, a lot of the uh, influx of uh, natural products are a direct result of that. They want to have something that's natural, and we're increasing. Every chance we get, we increase or we see a new product. It is for respiratory. We bring it in. All natural in general. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Go on, yeah. I'm glad you're here. Sometimes <laughs> people must laugh at me. The wrong word comes out. And we have our first question. Thank you, George. George asks, is it safe to race birds on doxycycline tylen? If I had the, I would say no, um, I would not. But if you wanted to use one of the two, I would use tylen uh, in the drinking water uh, before you race them. But generally speaking, most people don't medicate um, before they race Thailand is the one I, w I would certainly try, but I don't think I'd use doxycycline you know, before a race well, or in, a, during your training. Well, that's a combination also, doxycycline. Doxy, so yeah. Had that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was great to have a question. So, Somebody but if works. you're racing and your birds get sick, that's probably what happens. Well, you know, what they're trying to do is when you're racing your bird, there's no way to prevent it. They're being mixed with other birds in a big, right. big basket. Um, and what they're trying to do is prevent disease by adding medication before uh, they're basketed. Don't think it's a good idea. How do you know that? Maybe they got sick when they were flying. I know everything. Oh, okay. Do you ever, but uh, would, you ever watch, uh, what was the lady with the red shoes? To, um, the movie. I know, and Dorothy. She, uh, the Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> well, I am the wizard oh, okay. of Oz. I know everything. So There is absolutely no question. If I say it, it's the way it is. Let's just say I was flying, racing, and my birds got sick with respiratory. Mm -hmm. What about an all-natural product? Would that, that be okay to give them? Um, well, this is one of those rare real rare cases where the Wizard of Oz has to agree with something he just said. Well, you just said it. Yes. God, that's a good point. Thanks. I wish I had a thought. That's one of the better points you've ever come up with. 
And uh, <laughs> well, uh, when you're using something from Hil Hilton Herbs or, or other pigeon um, vitality, yeah, pigeon vitality, and there's others um, that is all natural. So if you want to medicate, um, it's really not a medication. If when you uh, give the uh, natural products that we're talking about, they are specifically made to um, increase the strength of your immune system. Immune means you want to try to prevent it. So great, great, great. great. Thank you. We could, we could end the show this very minute. <laughs> and if the people watching heard that, it's reason you can just shut everything off. It's just that it's that important. Hi, Danny. Well, I just said Danny. I didn't say his last name. Hi, Danny. I know. Danny says I'm looking for a longer, longer triangle scraper than the one that you show in your catalog, item 346 and 347. Do you have any longer handles than those which are 11 inches? Not 11 triangle. Inches. Do you have any longer handles? Oh, here's what I would suggest you do. Um, you can go to your local hardware store and they sell long handle, long wooden handles for mops and things like that. Buy one of those. Um, and then what you can do, the way the uh, scrapers are made, you can probably uh, drill or remove uh, and slide the scraper part of it onto the long handle. And then after it's on, you can glue it. But I would suggest you run some screws into it, through the handle, uh, into the new handle you bought, and through the handle of the scraper, uh, and you'll have a, a scraper that is you know, longer. We do sell one, don't we? Not one? triangle, though. Oh, not triangle. Yeah. Well, that you could use. Yeah. You'd have to make your own. I, uh, I'm always looking at our suppliers' catalogs from all over the world. Um, and that with a triangle, no. We have the flat handled one. Um, um, it was it. There is none made. You can make your own, but it has to be made very sturdy because you're going to be pulling. Uh, with a flat handle, you're pushing. But when you're pulling and you hit a crack or a nail or something, you could pull it apart. So um, maybe that's why there's none on the market. But no reason why you can't make your own. Um, Jerry Campos. Hi, Jerry. I would like to get some advice on racing pigeons and have a good program so I can be close to win. Thanks. Uh, what I would suggest you do is contact Gina, maybe <laughs> next week, first of the week. Uh, we have programs, right? We can send mm -hmm. them. We have programs for the racing that was created by uh, um, Natural, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, or was it? Dr. Bosa one? Yeah, Dr. Bosa. So um, if you email Gina, uh, she'll send you one, um, no charge at all. We're also considering putting them in the catalog. Why don't we think about that? Or you can go online and order them. They're free. They'll automatically be sent to your email. Well, how about that? Jerry asked Jerry a question, yep. and, and Gina answered it. <laughs> okay. All right. We were talking about some more... Uh, um, product. We just mentioned the natural product. There's a company called Hilton Herbs. I think these are made uh, overseas. I'm trying to remember what country it is. Um, yes. I guess it really doesn't matter. But Hilton Herbs makes a whole line of natural products. So we're talking about, in this particular case, Airborne. And what Airborne does is clears the mucus and um, uh, clears the throat so that because when birds are racing they're taking in a lot of air they're breathing 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 quickly and what you want to make sure that the air passage is clear airborne it's all natural and that's what it's for it will give you an idea it has uh, marshmallow in it who would have ever thought fine chamomile licorice apple cider vinegar um, so it has a whole bunch of different products that work on the respiratory system. Is that a different question? Mm -hmm. Okay. You want me to finish this one? Yeah. Okay. Hilton Herbs makes something called um, Airways Gold. So Airways meaning it makes it a lot easier to breathe. Um, it has 
some of the same ingredients, but it also has other ingredients. What I find um, interesting is so many of the natural products in today's world contain apple cider vinegar. It, um, it helps clear passages. It does so many, many things. You know, we're gonna, don't let me forget we're going to talk about bro mixing. We haven't, but it's so, so important. So if you're looking for natural ways to help you through a respiratory issue or as a preventative, um, airways go by Hilton Herb. And Hilton Herb sells, of course, products for pigeons, but they also sell products for horses, dogs, cats. They've been in business, I think, 25 years mm -hmm. doing all natural products. So it's a very good line of products. And if you want something specifically for poultry or horses or cattle, um, we can probably get it for you, you if it. you order it in bulk, not one that have to order a few? Um, we, yeah, at least two. No. Normally you have to order a minimum of two. Okay. Um, the other brand or line of all natural products is the Pigeon Vitality line. That's out of Norway? Uh, Norway, I yep. think. Um, it kind of goes with Jerry asking the question that he's asking. Oh, you want to read it? I'll, sure. I'll, I'll expand on it. Um, what kind of product I can use to prevent respiratory problem on the racing season? Because some flyers use the yellow drops and nasaline. Can you give an advice on any other product? Thanks. Yeah, sure. Um, when you're talking about racing season, as I just mentioned, um, it's so important that they, they're breathing uh, freely, not, no, nothing that would make them uh, not breathe and you've got to bring all of that air in. So uh, any of the products that are made by um, Pigeon Vitality, so we have one, two, there's two, uh, there's more of them. More um, so go to Pigeon Vitality, this one here is just drops, and that's what he talked about, the yellow drops. This isn't the exact same product. Those are made by companies we don't deal with. So, Jerry, if you're going to uh, do it, in, or you can even ask, uh, email, and we'll send them catalogs, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, we can send you uh, their catalog, which lists all of the products. It's no charge at all. So, um, if you were going to do, if I were going to suggest anything, this is it. Made specifically for racing, and the birds allowed to, uh, the birds can breathe much, much easier. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about bomb hexing? Um, I'll let you do it. No, you do a good job. I don't. Um, my, I'll um, start, and then you no, can. Okay. I won't elaborate. say anything unless I think it needed. It. Okay. So broom hexing is a product that you use with other respiratory product products. You want to use it for the first four days of any respiratory medicine that you're using, and it enhances. That's the right word. Mm -hmm. Enhances the medication for respiratory. It makes the product that you're using for respiratory even better right. and more effective. Uh, and we don't talk about it enough. Remember I was talking about some things that you should have. Mm -hmm. This is probably just as important as any medication. It's not a medication as Gina said. What it does is it makes the product work better. So. If you had this, it goes with any product that is specifically or mentions a respiratory issue. So if you're looking, because the important word that he used was preventative, here's what it says. As an aid in prevention and treatment of respiratory diseases of pigeons. Prevention. So it's not an antibiotic. You can use it with any respiratory issue. So you should have this in stock. On hand. So well, you're right. You're right. I, I used the wrong word. I'm sorry. We, I think we already talked about, well, we talked about Thailand. Um, doxycycline, did we talk about already? We didn't specifically talk about it. We Thailand is probably it. the most um, most mentioned product for respiratory, mm -hmm. but right behind it is doxycycline. doxycycline. And we sell doxycycline combined with two or three others, the Thailand and doxycycline, that's doxycycline. 
That's what I was going to say. Okay. You want me to go out and make sure my birds? No, you're okay. So we have several, we have Thailand injectable, we have Thailand powder, we have Thailand powder from a couple different companies. We have Doxycycline, we have Doxycycline Thailand together in powder form mm -hmm. and tablet form. This is Tylamox, Tylamox which Thailand, means Thailand and Moxicillin. This is Spiridox, which means Spiramycin and Doxycycline. This is Tylazine. Which is just this Thailand by itself. It's so just we, amazing. Yeah, so there's a lot lot of products that are combinations. Um because a lot of people are looking for more broad spectrum. Right. So by combining two of these products for you, uh, that you're getting a combination product and use the brom hixing, um, any of these will treat mm -hmm. just about any respiratory issue. Right. Wonder if they can hear my pigeons. I we got, know. I got three eight cage units just outside the door, and uh, they're making all kinds of noise. The sun is out, and they're having a good old time. And if any of y'all remember Dr. Pigeon, he has a respiratory product as well. It's a liquid that goes, yep, goes in the drinking water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our old friend Dr. Pigeon. Let's talk about ornithosis. Okay. You guys just saw that. Um, one, if you look in our catalog, it explains ornithosis. The new catalog will actually show you pictures of what ornithosis looks like. This one does too. Pardon? The old catalog shows. Is it okay? It's in the old. Yeah. But the picture. Oh, the pictures are in the back of the catalog. Mm -hmm. So if you get your catalog out or go online, you'll see pictures of ornithosis. It's a upper respiratory. It's usually a one eye, considered a one eyed cold, or you'll get a weepy eye. The reason I want to mention ornithosis is if you have any questions about it, uh, when you see a bird and a watery eye and you think it has ornithosis, wear rubber gloves when you handle it because ornithosis is, to my knowledge, only disease that is transmittable from human from pigeon to human with a, we call it pink eye. So uh, if you suspect ornithosis, get the bird out of there right away, wear rubber gloves, uh, make, just makes common sense and segregate it. There's a lot of different drugs that treat ornithosis, but you've got to treat it very, very quick. Not Don't a, wait, go ahead. Not only rubber gloves, but probably a mask also, because it can give you flu-like symptoms. Mm -hmm. Um, you could get the flu or, or flu-like symptoms and also pneumonia from it. So you have to be careful. Jerry's back. Oh. Of course, he never left them, was he? <laughs> One pro product that really intrigued me is Ultimate Amino Acid for Racing Pigeons. You think is good for it and for old birds help with hatching. Thanks. Well... Uh, Jerry, I appreciate your question, but it's not a product we sell. We, don't, we sell Ultimate Elixir. We sell an amino acid. And we sell amino acid, but not specifically right. Ultimate. Um, I, I can't answer your question. We sell amino acids. They're in our catalog. We don't sell anything called Ultimate. If I knew, I would do everything I could to help you, but I just don't know the, the product itself. Trying to find it? Yeah, it's a pit. One of them that we sell is a pigeon vitality product, which is amino acids, right? Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. If you go to our site or get on or look in our catalog, it's on page 90 of our catalog, um, but it's on the website too, which tell, talks about uh, amino acids. I wish I could answer your question specifically. Uh, amino acids, if I'm not mistaken, it's an energy product, isn't it? Um, um, 90, what did it say with this? Oh, I was looking at the other ones. Oh, omega-3 oil, vitamins. Mm -hmm. Nutritionals. I've been on pause since I read it. I thought it was... Breeding, molting, and after a race or flight. Okay. So, yeah. Jerry, I... 
thank you for helping us out because you've sent in three or four questions and there's not no rule against it send in because a, a lot of times one question um uh is a, when you answer it it brings up another question so i i thank you for supporting us well we got five more minutes if you want to send a question in you're more than you more than welcome to do it that's a fairly new product isn't it? yeah but it's also a good product we had it before from a different manufacturer this is even stronger it's called link aspect it's um Spectinomycin and lincomycin. Mm -hmm. um, we never could get the lincomycin. Nobody had it, and then it, um, and it came back on the market. Um, as as uh, Gina mentioned, it, it's a treatment, plus it helps resist um, mycoplasmosis. Mycoplasmosis is the one when you have a bird and it opens its beak. Uh, you'll see a slimy thread coming down. Mm -hmm. um, that's always mycoplasmosis. Uh, they says slime in the throat. So um, it's a product that is, has two different antibiotics. And uh, like I say, or like Gina said, hasn't been on the market back, you know, on the market again. But this one is one of the few that it's specifically been. tells you um, if you use, uh, follow with uh, or combine with bromhexine, mm -hmm. a very, very important product. Um, just a reminder, when you're watching the show, um, the products that we talk about, there is a link that will take you directly to the product to make it easier for you to find the products. The older shows have it on there also. Pardon? No, I said the older shows have the links also okay. that will take you're you. Response. See, I got this in front of me. I can't read oh, the question. Oh, I was reading that. Okay, what did yeah. it say? You don't want to... It wasn't a question. She, Veronica was reminding me to remind them of that. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. All this new technology has <laughs> got me all confused. That's okay. All right. Well, um, once again, we, we started out by talking about the new catalog. It's going to be ready soon if you're going to the Louisville show we fully expect and will have um, issues for you um, and we'll announce it on our show we're going to announce it at, on our websites that the catalog is available no sense in sending in a request now because what might happen is if you send in a request catalog you'll get the current catalog you won't get the, the new one Hi, James. James asks, is mycoplasmosis like canker? Like night and day. Right. Just absolutely not. Jim. Mycoplasmosis is, I just mentioned, is a um, respiratory problem that shows up when you open the beak, you see a clear, slimy thread. You see right through it. That's mycoplasmosis. Canker uh, can, is not a... Uh, respiratory issue. Canker is one of the protozoa as we talked about earlier. It's a, um, it doesn't, re mycoplasmosis can be treated with antibiotics. Canker, antibiotics have absolutely no um, value in treating canker. Uh, so you would, if you want to treat for canker, you buy a canker product made specifically for canker and it treats protozoa like canker, coccidiosis, and worms. Mycoplasmosis, definitely a respiratory issue, and the only thing that would help mycoplasmosis is an antibiotic made specifically for mycoplasmosis. And uh, it reminds me, Jim, the questions that people ask, like Jim is asking, are so valuable or so informative to other people you ask a question that maybe somebody else was wondering, well, what can I use on canker or mycoplasmosis? By sending in questions like that, um, it helps other people. There's no question um, that isn't valuable to be shown, be up on our screen, because it leads us off into another um, track of what is valuable to have and what is not valuable. Thank you. I think it's for. Thank you for all your questions. We appreciate it. It, help the, it helps the show. It helps us. It helps everyone else watching the show. Um, and I just wanted to mention show season is right around the corner. 
Um, we go to several shows. We do take product. If there's something that you want, um, products tend to sell out quick at the shows. So if you want to make sure you get it, you can pre-order it, um, pay for it, and then we'll bring it to, to the show. When do you start accepting pre-orders for shows? We'll bring it to the show, and you will not have to pay any shipping on it. We, don't, we haven't made it to um, yet. We have. I'll shut up. So usually um, a month prior to each show, we start accepting orders. So the Fremont show is... September 18th, I believe. So a month prior, we will start accepting pre-orders for the Fremont, Ohio show. Um, so usually a month prior, we'll start, start taking orders. Um, Fremont's a small show, so we don't have a lot of room to take stuff. So if you want to order, get that pre-order in early before the truck is full, or you just won't be able to get it in. And we're going, we go to Louisville. We go to the Big Apple, which is in Connecticut, even though the Big mm -hmm. Apple implies New York. Right. And we go to Lancaster. Mm -hmm. And with, Fremont again. And Fremont again. Yes. Those are all the shows we go to. Are they posted on our site? Okay. They're not all posted on our site yet, but they will be. But if you have any questions, everybody here has a list of them. Um, you can give us a call, inquire about what show we're going to, and we can let you know the dates if you need them. Okay, so our next show is Friday, August 13th. What is that? No, oh, they're different shows. Oh, they are listed on there. On the website? Yeah, they oh, are okay. on our website. So oh, yeah. They're there, yeah. Well, so they are there. So it tells you where they're at. Oh, and... there's one on there that has to be removed. Um, that one. <laughs> Pigeons on the Prairie. Oh, yeah. But Pardon? anyways, they are on our website. Um... Or you can call if you have any questions about pre-orders or what you got to do. And then until August 13th, if there's anything you want us to talk about on the show, any product you want us to show, let myself or Jerry know, and we'll be ha more than happy to talk I'm about gonna it. I'm going to take my hat off because there's an implication that I'm bald. <laughs> That's why I wear a hat. So as you can see, I got my own hair. See, I'm poor. It's his. I'm my bald. Although, it's sad because... My sweetheart, my wife, she loves bald-headed men. And I've offered to shave it off. She said, no, you don't have to. But <laughs> Maybe you it should It might reinvigor her. our... Anyways, <laughs> until August 13th, y'all have a good 